uh, I wanted to talk about commentary today. And uh, yesterday I was watching the Ultra Chen show and they were talking about commentary and stuff. One thing that David was talking about on there, which I thought was interesting, when he was talking about my commentary, he was saying that I am probably one of the better general commentators, right? I have, I'm kind of nebulous where I can do whatever style I want to do. So I'm very flexible and capable of doing whatever I want. He was talking about how in new and up and coming commentators, you often hear them emulating a style of someone they like. If somebody's a big Yipes fan, they're going to get on the mic and they're going to sound like Yipes when they first start. And they might even use Yipes' catchphrases or make some noise if they're a Tasty Steve fan or get off of me. How many times have you heard a commentator say get off of me who's not Tasty Steve and not one of the normal Tekken commentators, right? You will hear guys at your locals when you go, they a throw break happens, they'll say get off of me. What's for breakfast? Uh, uh, uh. Three people have already said, I say get off of me when I commentate, right? There's tons of stuff that I say all the time or that other commentators say all the time that if you hear it all the time from us at big events and tournaments and stuff, it's going to be common in your vocabulary or lingo because every time you think about that moment, what do people say when a throw break happens? They say, get off of me. Unhand me. Yeah, and it's not even always on purpose. It's just how it is. If you hear x or y commentator all the time you're gonna sound similar enough because it's the kind of commentary you listen to so it's what you're used to when you first start when you get in there for the first time what style you want to do is very based on probably what kind of player you are for me i'm a big fan of like the how and why of a game right i want to know the numbers i want to know how the game works, why people make the decisions they do. That is the part of the fighting game that's interesting to me. When I first started doing commentary, I was like a robot. What I sounded like was like, yeah, this move is plus two into the plus three, into the minus two, into minus seven. He could have punished with a bigger move into my, like I was a very, like, you know, the numbers of the game were so important to me because that's how I was as a player. So because of that, I sounded very robotic. I was very by the book, very technical. I knew the frame data on all kinds of stuff. So that was kind of the way I played. As a commentator, that was my style when I started. What I realized about that style is I was focused too much on the numbers and I, instead I needed to focus on the why sometimes. I also struggled with commentating matches where people play with a play style that is not very by the numbers because they just do weird stuff all the time. So I constantly was like, what is this guy doing? He's just doing all kinds of weird shit. But the reason I started with the numbers is because it's what I wished other people would do. If you start commentating, you will probably commentate in a way that is like what you want other people to sound like when you listen to commentary. And also you will kind of probably realize that you're maybe one dimensional in the way you sound in the beginning, right? And you can adjust from there. You'll have influences. And I think that's very normal. What will end up happening with your influences is that you have to build into your own style and figure out what you like to do. So for me to fix my commentary style, I taught myself how to play more unorthodox. I purposely chose to be a more unorthodox player so that way on commentary i could think in a more unorthodox way maybe for some people it doesn't make sense but for my brain i was like you know what what I, why don't i just do it and if i do this then it'll be easy for me to talk about you know when i'm minus sometimes i'm mashing fella the numbers don't tell the whole story that's what happened right <laughs> So I learned how to play solid most of the time, but also be unorthodox when I have to. And because of that, I think my commentary then shifted styles. I was more interested in the why. Why did he press there? Well, it is minus two, but he did this, this, and this. It is minus this, but because of the space here. It is minus this, but because of the meter here, he's afraid of this, so he thinks this. He woke up low medium kick there because of the distance on this, the knockdown, right? So knowing the numbers and the information was still the core of what my commentary was focused on. However, I had more info on the why because my play style had changed. What I think is most important is watching players and studying the game and knowing what the characters want to do in every range, knowing what the players want to do, knowing why decisions are made, and really explaining this and praising the high level moments of knowledge of situations frame data, decision-making, understanding, and situational awareness. So those are the things I really like in fighting games. So it's why I commentate the way I commentate. Why did Nemo mash for the 19th time on Wake Up, right? Like you have to figure, you have to sort that out in your brain. You have to figure out how he is. Why does he do that? And why did it work? I think when you try to figure out your style, you should think about your commentary and think about what you need to change to become what you want to be, right? So that's what I did. And it improved my commentary a lot. I will bring up a good example. You know, Bloodhawk, Last year, if I was sitting here talking to you guys about Bloodhawk, I would be like, you know what? Bloodhawk is a real wiener. He just goes completely by the numbers. I, I haven't heard that man sound excited since probably the Alamo. It's been a long time since I've heard him have any energy in his voice. I think if you listen to the, the Bloodhawk of last year compared to the Bloodhawk of this year, it is a complete 180 and how talented he is at doing excitable but informative commentary. 
which is something that Tekken desperately needs. Bloodhawk has gotten so much better at that. Last year, I remember there was like a moment, I think it was at Evo or something. I was talking with Rip and I remember him saying to Bloodhawk, hey, my voice is kind of shot. So I need you to carry the enthusiasm. And Bloodhawk was like, okay. <laughs> so then he tried to be exciting that block. And I, I think he did an okay job, but obviously it's not his specialty, especially at the time. And I have to imagine that moment was like an influence, an influential factor when he realized like, I need to be the guy that carries the energy for this block. And he realized how hard it was for his style. I realized the same thing many years ago. There was like, a moment in E-League where E-League was doing a top five moments of last week or something, right? And four of the clips were Rip. I realized that Rip was so good at the big moments. Of all of us there, maybe his Street Fighter knowledge was the weakest, but his ability to sell big moments was way better than myself or even Steve or Z or anybody else that was there. And it made me realize like, shit, I'm really bad at selling big moments. Maybe my energy levels are better than they used to be, but my ability to sell, I realized that I was weak at that. So that's something I went back and I dug into because it was a weakness that I could sort out and figure out. And since then, I've gotten way better at it, like a hundred million times better at it. So as a commentator, I think you have to challenge yourself and try new stuff to just see. So I had to figure out, how do I just not be the nerd all the time? If I'm with somebody who's completely entertaining and energetic, I can be the nerd. If I'm with somebody who has less energy, maybe, or somebody who's really talkative and I need to say less, then I can be really compact and concise. If I'm with somebody where I need to lead and I'll let them do the knowledge, right? Because maybe they're not as comfortable being excited. I'll be the excitable one. You know, you got to train and hone all these different skills. And if you want to change up your style, you have to probably attack from a different angle. Maybe you have to change your play style. Uh, in the game, maybe you have to study other commentators that you don't listen to that are good at whatever you're not good at. So you can like kind of piece together what they're doing. If you listen to my commentary now, I'm big chilling on commentary, right? I don't sound very buttoned up or anything like that. I kind of deliver in the way that you expect from me. Very relaxed, but very like focused on what I wanted to say. Gio Ravilla says, I used to not like Say Jam's commentary and it's weird listening to him explain why. I mean, dude, I get it. My Nothing's perfect, right? You gotta, wherever you start is probably gonna be shitty. And I started off very shitty. It just takes you time to improve and figure out what to improve on. I'm gonna be the guy that's gonna describe the intricates of the match. They're always going to pair me with a Steve or a Yipes or somebody who is like a very energetic entertaining style of commentator generally right and if i'm paired with someone like that i know that i want to give them as much time to shine as they can i really condense and try to like squeeze down the commentary that i have and let them do their thing and be as enjoyable as entertaining as always and then sneak in my analysis as much as possible it just depends on who you are with the kind of commentary that you do and for me i've made myself a very general commentator by building specific skills on purpose i have to have a backup plan for a backup plan you know most of the time we're with other commentators so you really just have to be like well we're, we're two commentators we're chilling what style of commentator is my worst matchup i've kind of prepared myself to be ready for anything who drinks water like that I get paired with all kinds of people. Yeah, that's a good point. I was with L.I. Joe. I knew that compared to most of us, he is a less, ex a less experienced public speaker in terms of being on a stream as a commentator. So my goal was to really engage and ask lots of questions and really try to set him up to talk about the stuff that he knows very well. If I said anything that was like knowledge of any kind, I wanted to make sure it was stuff that he could bounce off of and not just something that I'd say and then he'd immediately be like, that's cool. I would always try to include him in whatever the discussion is. Like the way I thought about it was I try to wrap my arm around him while we are commentating. You know what I mean? With my words. If you make him comfortable, he's going to be chatting more and we can just keep going and get into the matches. If you commentate like normal with someone who's not a commentator, they don't know the normal cues and kind of rhythms like a com like commentary goes. So you have to really include them in your discussion so that it feels like you two are just chilling and chatting and they forget they're on the mic. That was the strategy from the beginning. That was like step one. I was like, all right, let's do it like this. Obviously, depending on who you're with, the strategy will change. 